Hi everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and if you've been watching our New Egg TV YouTube channel in the past few weeks, you've probably seen some of our videos introducing the new Socket 1155 platform from Intel. The code name is Sandy Bridge and it features both the 32 nanometer CPUs you can see here, as well as motherboards which feature the H67 or P67 chipsets necessary to run this CPU. Unfortunately, just within the past few days, Intel made a press release stating that they've identified a flaw with the serial ATA controller that is integrated into the Sandy Bridge chipset, H67 and P67 alike. Now, the questions you might be having if you've recently invested in this platform are, how does this affect me if I've just recently put together a computer with this platform? What can I do to work around the problem? And if you don't want to work around the problem, what other options do you have? So that is what today's video is all about to give you guys at home a little bit better of an idea of how to handle this issue. Now some folks who hear that a product they've recently purchased, especially a computer component, has a design flaw, they'll definitely want to return that, get a refund, and be done with it, and we completely understand if that is your position. You can go ahead and contact customer service, they're issuing refund RMAs with that no questions asked for Sandy Bridge motherboards, laptops, or PCs you might have recently purchased. Now the good news, the silver lining, is that the CPU itself is totally fine. They're still just as powerful and efficient as they were just a few weeks ago when we first introduced them. The design flaw is with the chipset that is part of the motherboard. And even more specifically, the design flaw affects the serial ATA ports right here on the front. Now this is a standard Intel board based on the uh, P67 chipset. So right here we can see all six ports that are part of that chipset's controller. Now here they are actually color coded. So the two black ports here are SATA revision 2, which is 3 gigabits per second transfer rate, and the blue port here is SATA revision 3, which is 6 gig gigabits per second transfer rate. So as you can hopefully tell from my scribble on the whiteboard here, ports 0 and 1 are SATA revision 3, 6 gigabits per second, those are the blue ports right here, those are perfectly fine, they're okay, no problem, you can use them without any fear of data loss. Ports 2, 3, 4, and 5 the black ports here, they're SATA revision 2, 3 gigabits per second. That is where the problem has been identified. And Intel has stated that in about 5 to 15% of motherboards that are out there right now, over time, you will experience data loss and eventually the ports will stop working entirely. Um, also, Intel has stated that if you're doing additional work on these ports, if you're doing a lot of data transfer, you might increase the chances of the problem hap happening or make it happen sooner. So the workaround is simply to bypass these ports and not use them at all. Now, in most home computers, you'll probably have a hard drive and you'll probably have an optical drive. And generally speaking, that's the bare minimum that you need. Uh, and so in that case, all you need to do is take your serial ATA cable coming from your hard drive and the one coming from your optical drive, plug them into these two ports, 0 and 1, and you're good to go. As long as you're not using these black ports here, then you will be fine. Um, one other thing that might crop up is if you're using a different motherboard than this one, this is a pretty stock model here with just six serial ATA ports. Some motherboards have an additional chip on the board that controls additional serial ATA ports. Since that chip is not part of the H67 or P67 chipset, you can use those additional ports as well and have more than two drives connected. Now, if you're using a system with just six ports like this and you have more than two drives, there's where you run into a little bit more of a problem. In that case, you could get an add-on card that you plug into a PCI Express slot here, controls additional serial ATA ports and additional serial ATA devices, plug into that, and again, you'll be fine as long as you're not using these two ports. If, in the extreme situation, you have no other option but to use those ports, it's recommended that you use those with an optical drive, simply because data loss or bit loss, communicating with an optical drive, chances are will be a lot less have a lot less impact on your system than if it's your operating system or storage drive. Now for those of us who are early adopters of the Socket 1155 platform, this is definitely a disappointment, but it is good to know that there's a workaround in place that will let you continue to use your hardware until revised versions of these motherboards are released. One final thing to keep in mind is that you will need to swap out your motherboard eventually once the new versions come out. Intel is ramping up production of the chipsets that replace these. Unfortunately, you can't swap out a chipset as an end user and there's no software or firmware update that will fix this issue. So in a couple months time, we're expecting around April, you will need to reconfigure your system and replace your motherboard. With that in mind, 
it, it is still helpful to have your system up and running for the next couple months. So hopefully this video has given you guys a better idea of what the problem is, how to work around it, and what the ramifications are if you want to continue using the Sandy Bridge platform. For New Egg TV, my name is Paul. Thank you very much for watching today's video, everyone. We will see you next time.